As immigrants to the U.S., so many things are new and it's tough to know how things work here. Whether it was you that came into this country or your parents or your grandparents, getting to understand how things work is not easy. So it's no surprise you may have some fear of investing in real estate. Well, it's not just immigrants, it's most people when they first get started. But fear has helped no one and it certainly won't help you. I had some of those fears myself when I first got started. So in this video, I'm gonna walk through the top four fears that I've identified and talk through the strategies on how to deal with each one. I love this quote from Mark Twain. It says, courage is resistance to fear, mastery of fear, not absence of fear. So fear is just a natural condition of being human. We are gonna be fearful sometimes, but the ability to move past it, to master it is so key to get the benefits that you're looking for. So let's get started. Number one, fear of losing money. This is likely at the top of the list for you because it's a common concern, but it's not really something to be worried about if you follow some basic steps. What I recommend is to begin with financial planning and budgeting. Look at your finances and understand how much do you have to invest. If you're gonna be an active investor, set aside some money for contingencies or for things that potentially could go wrong in the future. But think through, what is it do I have to invest? And make sure it's something relatively small that you can get started with. Thinking about this ahead of time will allow you to walk into real estate investing with a very clear idea and clear head as to how you're gonna approach it. And it's gonna prevent you from overextending yourself or having undue risk that you don't need. Another way to address this fear is just to learn and to invest in your education. The more you know about real estate investing, the more comfortable you're gonna be with it and your fear is gonna decrease. And the third approach I suggest is to thoroughly research your market. If you're gonna be, say, an active real estate investor buying single family homes, understand that market, understand the properties that are there, understand the trends that are going on there, understand the rates that are being charged for rent, understand local economic conditions. Just understand that area very, very well. If you're gonna be a passive investor and invest in other people's deals, understand that segment, understand apartments, understand the areas that they're investing in. That kind of market research is again gonna make you feel more confident in making the right decision. By focusing on these strategies, you can create a more secure and informed approach to real estate investing, which can minimize the fear of financial loss. Now remember, there's risk in any investment that you make, but preparation and planning can really reduce that risk. Number two is lack of knowledge. This is one of the biggest fears I had when I first got started, is that I don't know anything about real estate investing and there is a lot of fear that came with that. So that's why I really focused on this one in the very beginning. A common saying is, you don't know what you don't know, and it's very true. But there are actions that you can take to become more educated and really address this fear. The most obvious first step is to educate yourself. And there are a ton of ways to educate yourself when it comes to real estate investing. If you like to read books, there's a lot of really good books out there on the topic. If you like to listen to podcasts, there's a lot of very good podcasts that are available. If you like to attend seminars or be part of a course, there's all sorts of options to get educated on real estate investing. Just start with the basics and then start looking into the area of real estate that you're really interested in. The second way to address this is through mentorship and networking. This one is huge and many people just don't think about this. A great idea is to seek a mentor and it doesn't necessarily have to be a super experienced real estate investor. It could just be someone that's maybe a step or two ahead of you. Get with them to learn the basics and to understand how real estate investing works. In addition, you can attend local real estate meetups, real estate investor associations. Uh, you can join online forums where you can talk about real estate. The idea of mentoring and networking is huge in this space and is something that you can take advantage of. And you probably know somebody that is investing in real estate that you can talk to. And the third recommendation I have is to start small. You could, for example, buy a small single family home, or you can put a lower amount into real estate syndication, or you could partner with a very experienced real estate person to, to do a deal. There's a lot of ways to 
to start small and safer uh, to get into this so you're more familiar with it. By taking these steps, you can gradually increase your confidence and your knowledge in real estate investing, helping you alleviate any fears you might have regarding your inexperience with this. Remember, every expert was once a beginner, and that includes you. So the key is to start and to keep progressing. Number three, fear of managing tenants. Now this fear is a very common one, especially for those people that are interested in getting involved in active real estate investing. Managing tenants can seem pretty scary, but it doesn't have to be that way. Here are four ways I recommend you think through this to move past this fear. The first recommendation I have for the active investor is to create a good lease. You can find templates out there that are specific to your state, for example, but it's smart to talk to a local attorney to make sure that that lease is structured the way it'll work for you. My wife and I did that. We talked to a local attorney for the single family homes that we own, and we created a lease that worked very well for the state that we're in. A well-written lease can really help to get any misunderstandings cleared away and to make sure that it's very clear what the expectations are when it comes to renting a property. The second suggestion is to develop a good screening process. This one is so important for you to have a good experience with tenants because you're gonna pick people that are gonna be staying in your property and you wanna pick people that are responsible, that care for the property that you're at. This one is so important because picking a good quality tenant is really gonna set the stage for how it's gonna be for you as a landlord. This includes things like running credit checks, background checks, looking to make sure they have a good strong income source. Now it's not foolproof, but if you do a good screening, you'll have a much better chance of finding people that will take care of your property, they'll respect you, and they'll pay on time, and that's really important. We spent a lot of time looking at screening and really picked some people that we thought were great, and so far we've had excellent results. But it's not foolproof, but again, you can do a lot in this area. Third is to establish good communication with your tenants. This is one thing that we do quite a bit of ourselves. We make sure to check in once in a while. Hey, how are you doing? How's everything going? Whenever there's an issue, we address it right away. It really makes the tenant feel like the landlord cares. And that goes a long way because if the landlord cares, they're gonna feel like caring as well. And the fourth recommendation is to perhaps consider hiring a property manager. If you get into it and you just don't like the experience of dealing with tenants, then hiring a property manager is a very good solution. Yes, it'll reduce your returns a bit to hire a property manager, but you'll also greatly reduce perhaps your stress, the time you have involved, and for you, that might be more important. So by taking these steps, you can address the common concerns that people have when they get into that role of a landlord. And getting good at this will really serve you as an active investor. Number four, fear of the time needed. This is another concern I had when I first got started because I have a career, I'm a professional, and I wondered, do I have enough time to get into this and still spend time with family, have vacations and all of that? That was something that I was worried about. And looking back now, yes, it's very doable, but it depends on the strategy you're gonna be taking and how you're gonna approach this whole real estate investing game. It's important to make sure you balance your investment goals with your personal life. And you can certainly do that. And here are some suggestions on how I manage this concern. Number one is time management and organization. I'm a fairly organized person, so for me, the organization piece wasn't that difficult. But for some people, that may be a challenge. So just, you know, have some lists, you know, have a good calendar that you can work with. Really structure your real estate activities separately so you can track them and make sure you're getting things done that you need to get done. One thing I do as well personally that's worked well for me is that I schedule time every day of a certain time window to work on real estate. For me, I do it pretty early in the morning before the family wakes up so that that way I've got very quiet time that I can concentrate um, and that's my real estate investing time. But you do you. If you work really well late at night, then great, do it then. The second recommendation I have is to start small and go gradually. If you start small, you'll be able to understand the kind of time commitment it takes to, to invest in real estate the way you're doing it. It's much better than jumping into a larger investment 
where a lot more of your time is involved and all of a sudden you feel like you're overstretched. So it's not a good situation to be in. Once you become comfortable and efficient with the investment that you have and the time that you're taking to, to manage it, you can then proceed in growing a little more. Uh, and that way you're not overextending yourself. And a third recommendation I have is to set realistic expectations. You know, understand that when you get started in anything new, it could take a lot of work at the beginning. But I know of very few things that are great benefits that don't take a lot of work when you start. So I hope that by adopting these strategies, they can help you better manage the time that's required to do real estate investing and integrate it more seamlessly into your life. Remember that successful real estate investing doesn't necessarily require a ton of time. It really depends on the approach you wanna take. If you wanna be an active investor or a passive investor, you'll have different amounts of time that will be needed, but they all work. The last thing I wanna mention is this. Don't get intimidated by what other people are doing. What I mean by that is don't look at what other people have accomplished and the success they've had and compare yourself to them. First of all, they could be in a very different spot in their career as an investor than you are. Perhaps they've been investing for, for far longer than you or maybe they took a different approach than you've been thinking about taking. For example, if I were to start playing soccer or football as a new player, would it make any sense for me to compare myself to a professional? Of course not. We're gonna be very different. They're gonna be much better. I'm getting started, but that's okay. That's part of the process and eventually I will become better and better and better. And that's the mindset you think you need to have. That kind of comparison doesn't make sense in soccer or football. And it certainly doesn't make sense in investing either. And the second thing I want to mention is that there's no hurry here. You are on your own path. Take your time and do it so that you're comfortable and you're not taking unnecessary risks. It's very easy to go on social media and look at influencers in this space and think, wow, they're they're so successful, they're doing this, they're doing that, and feel bad about yourself. And that's totally the wrong approach. You're on your own path. And if you can get dedicated and just keep your blinders on, don't look at those other people and just learn and do what you need to do, you'll see success over time. And that's really the goal. So I hope you found this video useful. If you've got any questions or concerns, please feel free to put them down in the comments and I'm happy to, to respond to them. So thank you for watching the Immigrant Wealth Channel.